Hello, boys and girls on the internet. This is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions, and welcome to part three, the third and final part in a series comparing the Small HD DP4 EVF and the Sakudo EVF. In part three, I really want to talk about some of the things I've learned from having both of these units for a number of months, uh, using them in real world situations on a number of corporate video shoots, which is my bread and butter work, as well as things I've learned from testing them for this video series. So here we go. In the last episode, we talked about some of the cool features that these monitors have, like false color for judging the exposure of your shot. Invariably, though, you'll find yourself in a situation, or maybe you'll do this all the time, where you're not using all these features, particularly when you're using it with digital SLRs that turn the back of the monitor off. Having an EVF monitor that displays the color that your camera is capturing accurately and exposure properly is crucial. When I first saw the Small HD DP4 monitor, I was really drawn to how it looked. I thought it looked big and beautiful and bright and crisp and clear. And it does look like all these things. And I thought it made my camera's footage look really good. And I was really pleased with the look of it overall. When I received the Zakuto EVF and I plugged both monitors into the same camera through the same HDMI live feed, I was to be honest, blown away by how differently they represent exposure and they reproduce the color coming out of my camera. It may sound dramatic, but the Zakuto EVF was a re-education for me. If you're in a situation where you're not using false color, or any of the other tools to gauge your exposure or you're setting your white balance based on the tone you're seeing in your EVF monitor. If your monitor is not calibrated to your camera, you could be completely messing up your shot. The question that I wanted to know right off the bat was, which one is showing me what my camera is actually outputting? Is it the small HD or is it the Zakuto EVF? You can see here in the pickets, look at the depth of the shadows that the Zakuto EVF monitor picks up that the small HD doesn't. It almost looks washed out in comparison. In shots where it was very a, a really bright shot, I noticed less that the exposure was different, but when you are shooting a darker image, the small HD DP4 stays very bright no matter what you're shooting. With the Zakuto EVF, I noticed that it was always darker than what my camera was actually capturing but I find that it's able to reproduce the entire gamut of uh, gradation between what's really light and what's really black in a way that the small HD doesn't. I mean, there were situations where I thought I was, my, my footage was exposed properly only to find out that I'd underexposed the image because the monitor was showing it brighter than what the camera was actually capturing premise of me showing you these differences isn't to say that the small HD or Zakuto can't be tuned to match your camera's output. It's so that you're aware that they, they may not display your camera's output accurately when you get them out of the box. So it's not just the differences between exposure, there's also a difference in how they show the color that your camera is outputting. Here's a perfect example of where color accuracy comes into play. Skin tones. So here's the same feed going out of my camera into these two EVFs. On the right we have the Zakuto EVF and on the left we have the small HD 4 EVF. The Zakuto EVF shows kind of an orangey hue to the skin. The small HD, the same feed, shows the skin with a pinky hue. So which one is it? Is it orange? Or is it pink? So let's look at what my camera was actually shooting. Here's a shot from the back of the LCD. And here's a shot from what my camera actually shot. And as you can see, it's most aligned with the Zakuto EVF. I don't know how they did it, but uh, the color accuracy of the Zakuto EVF is bang on. And if it's not, and you get it, and you're trying it with your camera, you can easily tune it. The best advice I could tell you when you're buying any EVF or any monitor, check it for its color accuracy. It's so important when it comes to skin tones. It's important when it comes to setting your white balance. It's important to lighting your scene. 
make sure that you have the same image as closely as possible coming out of your monitor. If you see it's off, tune that monitor. There's different ways you can do it. The small HDP4 does not have a color bar setting built into it, but if you have a nonlinear editor and you have HDMI, just throw up some color bars in your nonlinear editor and output it to your HDMI to the small HDP4, and then use the blue only mode and the grayscale mode in the small HDP4 to set up the monitor correctly. The Zakudo EVF, of course, has color bars built into it, and it has blue only and grayscale so that you can tune it properly if you need to. I will say that for every camera that I hooked the Zakudo EVF up to, I had zero problems with it displaying color accurately. The small HDB4 unfortunately is restricted uh, a little bit in its ability to really change the image of the monitor when you're tuning it. For some reason, I noticed that the brightness and contrast controls didn't really impact the picture very well. With the Zakudo EVF, it's very obvious that you're changing the contrast and the brightness. I spoke to Small HD about it and they told me to use another um, setting instead of brightness and contrast, uh, which is the backlight. And backlight doesn't change the brightness or contrast, but it does dim the monitor overall. And I found that when I had it dimmed a couple of settings down, it more closely matched my camera's output. Okay, let's talk about some of the differences, the bells and whistles of both of these EVFs. The Zakudo EVF is quicker for switching. It shows both the live view as well as the record modes and the playback modes quicker. If brightness is important to you, the small HD DP4 monitor is certainly the brighter of the two. Here you can see Zakudo is set at 100% of its brightness capacity. I did find in this sunny situation, it is quite easy to see and certainly you can dial that brightness up. You're gonna pay for some of that brightness in battery life. The Zakudo in my battery tests did way better with battery life on one Canon like Zakudo battery. The Zakudo lasted five hours and 50 minutes. That's on a signal that's outputting video at 1080i the entire time. The small HD DP4 lasted two hours and 20 minutes on one battery in the exact same situation. The small HD DP4 uses two batteries and if you wanna use two batteries, it will last four hours and 40 minutes. In a real world, shooting situation. I never ran out of battery power on the Zakudo EVF for a full day shoot. The bigger issue with the small HD DP4 is that they do not have a battery indicator. This is one of the things they could seriously improve on, which is just to have a simple battery indicator like Zakudo does. Zakudo goes above and beyond and not only does it have a battery indicator, but you can place it in any four corners of the monitor as well as their audio indicators. If you need to see 1080p 60 frames per second output on your monitor because you're going to output that to an external device or because you just want to see it at 60 frames per second, the small HD DP4 is the only one that offers that. The Zakudo EVF has 1080p support at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, but they do not support 60. This doesn't mean that you can't record at 60 frames per second at 1080p. It just means you won't be able to see it and or output that same 60 frames per second to an external device if you go through the Zakudo EVF before getting to the external device. Another thing to keep in mind is connectivity. Both of these monitors are primarily HDMI monitors. However, on the small HDDP4, it also accepts composite and component input, which is pretty cool. So if you have the old school way of uh, hooking up your camera to an external device, then you can use these until an HDSDI version comes out for either of these monitors. Small HD has two presets for cameras, a generic Nikon and Canon preset. I don't know much about the Canon one, but I know that the Nikon preset is already had a firmware upgrade done to it to tweak it and yet it's still pretty stretched out looking. I would love to see them add more camera presets, especially for digital SLR support. There's a lot more guesswork involved with small HD scaling because the scaling corners aren't constrained. So when you scale it, you have to scale the horizontal and the vertical separately and you could end up stretching your image. Um, with this Kudo, you do have constrained edges and you can also save the presets. So Kudo is 
catered really a preset to the majority of cameras out there, um, particularly the digital SLRs. And then, of course, you can scale it and save the presets. The Sakudo EVF also supports anamorphic lenses, and it has the most fantastic version of frame lines in their more recent firmware upgrade, which is frame appearance, and it gives the appearance of a box. So instead of having the lines, you don't have to see the image on the other ends of the lines at all. Why distract yourself with excess information that you're not going to see in the final version of your shot? Why not just stick to um, focusing on what you will have in the shot. So I really love the frame appearance option for the frame box. I applaud both Small HD and Zakudo for having products that are firmware upgradable. Small HD has done their own version of upgrading, but on the hardware side, for a very small amount of cash, they've offered an upgrade kit. And in that upgrade kit, they have upgraded the iCup as well as added a cap to protect the eye cup from the elements. Small HD added magnets to the end of their eye cup cap so that you can mount the eye cup cap to the side of your optics. This is such a cool feature. It doesn't flap around in the wind and I think it's an awesome solution. For the eyepiece, uh, you'll remember that I talked about the eyepiece being able to, the original one falling off. I'm happy to say that if you push this new eyepiece all the way back, past the last little seam on your optical viewfinder. Once you get it past that last seam, check it out. It's not falling off there. So I am so happy that Small HD listened to customers and they have really upgraded the EVF portion of their DP4 hardware. The opening on it is a lot smaller, so you have less surface area. It also shipped with a remote control that you can hook up so that you can remote access the features from a remote area, which I think is a really cool idea. However, when I hooked it up and you're seeing me hook it up live here, this was totally unrehearsed. My monitor started completely freaking out. I did um, contact Small HD. Um, they are aware of this issue on a few of their monitors and are looking into a solution for it. There's a couple more things you should know about the Small HD. One is that it can get hot. The outside edge of the monitor and somewhat the back can get warm to the touch. You know, at first it was a bit concerning because I'm worried about it overheating. I've never had any overheating problems with the monitor, but certainly you need to be aware that it does get hot. The Small HD also has an issue with burn-in. I've heard multiple complaints about it online. And I did read in a blog that Small HD was responding to the comment saying that if you run over about 48 hours of video through the monitor, the burn-in issue should go away. And if not, then it's an issue with the monitor itself. I did try this. I hooked it up to my PlayStation and ran multiple hours of video through it. I would like to say that there is certainly less burn-in present on the monitor. It's not 100% gone, but I notice that when I do see it, it evaporates a lot quicker than it did originally. So that's something to keep in mind. One of the rumors I'd heard online about the Zakudo EVF that I wasn't sure was true or not was some reports of people saying that the monitor had some lag issues. So I thought I'd test this to see if I saw anything. I tested it um, walking up and down a staircase, which was the suggestion to see if the stairs I'm walking up and down on were in line with what was actually happening in real life. I was using the most recent firmware upgrade with the EVF when I was doing these tests, and uh, with both a 720p and a 1080i signal going into the monitor, I'm not really seeing any noticeable lag. Both of these EVFs ship with a simple ball mount uh, for the top of your camera. I think you'll find that once you start using it, unless you want to shoot uh, looking down at the monitor, you're probably going to either want to mount the EVF on the left of your camera, uh, maybe if you have a shoulder um, setup, or uh, the back of your camera, which is actually what I prefer. This is more run and gun. If I just want an EVF and my camera, I don't really want anything else um, set up. Zakudo, of course, has a plethora of mounting options. Most of them are set up for mounting your EVF to the side of your camera. And Small HD now is carrying a line of rigs to provide mounting options for their monitor and EVF. So there you have it. My final thoughts on the Small HD DP4 and the Zakudo EVF, two very 
distinct products that kind of work for two different audiences. I'd say that if you're more primarily looking for a monitor that has this cool ability to do double duty and transform into an EVF, the Smell HD does a great job of achieving that. So kudos EVF, to me, in my mind, fits the EVF bill perfectly and it really checks all the boxes as far as what I think an EVF should be. It's really a first rate monitor and if I would suggest buying any piece of gear, honestly, uh, especially if you're any shooter who has ever had a hard time judging exposure, um, hitting focus marks, or um, being able to really gauge your shot out in the field for whatever reason, whether your LCD on your camera sucked, your EVF wasn't up to par, the one that came with your camera, or you didn't even have one, um, and you want these professional features, an EVF will provide you with these tools. Now it's just up to you to figure out which one suits you best. So I hope this review has been helpful. Thank you for joining me again. Take care.